Wow, these are bright lights. So how many of you love that film that Louis showed with those butterflies and those hummingbirds? Come on, come on. Any of you take biology classes yet? You got some biology classes? How many of you guys like to go to the zoo or look at nature? All that stuff? Okay, a lot of you. I want, I, I love that. I want you to ask yourself one question though. When you look at that film that you saw earlier or you go to the zoo, I, I, I want you to ask this question. What can biology do for you? What can biology do for you? Not just it's beautiful, but what can it do for you? Let me give you some examples. See that gecko up there? You know a gecko could climb this wall very easily, and if it climbed a, a whole wall of glass, it could hang on by one toe supporting itself. Now, how many of you would like to have gloves that you could climb up this wall and be like a real Spider-Man. All of you, right? Well, it's, it's, it's not magic. It's not magic, because biology tells you that there are lots of little ridges on that one toe, thousands of those ridges. And there are little bitty hairs that come out of each one of those ridges. And there's little bitty hairs that come out of each one of those hairs. And we know how to make structures like that, so maybe we can do that. Uh, who, pick another animal that you like. Pick some. <laughs> Dolphin. Do what? What? Dolphin. Dolphins are one of my favorite, you know, because they got to keep, they got to keep swimming. I, oh, I'm seeing my clock. They want to get me off the stage yet. That isn't right. So um, they keep swimming around the ocean and they got brains our size. Do you wonder how they ever sleep at night? You wonder that. Well, you know what they can do? They can sleep half their brain at a time. So they put half their brain, and their other brain just kind of works a little bit, so it keeps aware like if a shark comes. Just imagine how great that could be if you were in school, and you can sleep half your brain at a time, but you're awake enough that your teacher thinks you're paying attention. That would be really awesome. One, one more animal. Let's, uh, dogs. Okay. Okay. So dogs are great, right? So dogs have, can smell about a million times better than we can. So you'd be able to tell your friends coming at your house, you can smell them coming through the door, and you don't even have to see them. Now, I was thinking for some people that'd be good, but some of my friends I really don't want to smell when they're coming down the road. So a few years ago, I had the opportunity to go to an organization near Washington, D.C. called DARPA. Any of you ever heard of DARPA? A few people heard of DARPA. Maybe you, maybe you saw some of the races we did through the desert with cars that could drive themselves and uh, go through the desert and go in traffic. Well, DARP is this organization that's a magical place. It was formed after the Soviet Union put the first satellite up called Sputnik. And it's an organization whose job it is is just to think big thoughts and to make sure we're always in the United States the lead in technology. So I had a great chance to go there. And DARPA's done a lot of great things. NASA, the space program, came out of DARPA. I guess you heard of the internet, you guys, right? So the internet was discovered at DARPA. All kind of things like that. So we had an opportunity when I got to go there as the director of the science office at DARPA to ask that question, what can biology do for us? So I want to give you some examples of some of the things we did and we learned. So you saw Tracy up here before when she was over looking at terrorism and everything. We had this problem because none of our robots could actually go down in caves and go through forests and do all kinds of things like that because uh, robots on wheels or robots on tracks, they just couldn't get there. So we thought, what in biology? You know, you never have a problem. A deer runs through a forest, uh, things go away. So what we did is we studied roaches. We developed little treadmills and put roaches on treadmills. We watched how they walked. You ever see a roach fall over? They don't. They just could run all over. They're behind your refrigerator, in your garage, everywhere. So what we did is we designed a robot based on how a roach walks. And we designed it and saw if it can go around. And let's see if there. And that's Rex the robot. And it could do something that no other, organ, no other robot can do. And it could go over obstacles because it had six legs. And what we did is we didn't design it to think about it. We just made it like you and me. Like if you're going out to play soccer, you don't think about where you put your foot. And if you hit a rock, you don't think about falling over. You just do it naturally. Now, 
If you ever chased a roach, and if you're in Texas, you probably did, you know they get on their hind legs and run away from you sometimes. And that's exactly what this one did on this time. <laughs> now, how many of you like to swim? Okay, anybody swim with fins on the back of their, their legs? Pretty good, right? Pretty good. But you know, fish don't swim like that, or penguins don't swim like that. They fly through the water. They really fly through the water. So we said, how could we make something that could make you fly through the water? And we created this kind of uh, new kind of fin that, that allows a person or a scuba diver to fly through water. And you can go three times faster, three times faster than you can with fins, several, several miles an hour. So these are being used by a bunch of divers in the military right now, but you'll be able to get them in a few years. So if you want to swim circles around your friends, you can do that. Now, my favorite one, because I love dogs and I love mules, is we want to design a robotic pack mule. We called it Big Dog, but it was really a pack mule. And uh, what it was is it was something that, again, kind of worked like a dog. Now, people say there are two people in there and they're walking around. They're really not. I hate it when they kick that poor thing, don't you? But the point of it is, is you can create a robot made with legs that acts just like an animal can, and it stays up, and it can walk through all kinds of terrain, because we ask what can, you know, what can biology do for us? See it over rocks, it does lots of things. So the last part, I'm a pediatrician, and yeah, most of you probably go to pediatricians, so it's another, yeah, great, it's another whole story how a, how a pediatrician gets to DARPA. But uh, one thing I was really concerned about, and we all have to concern about, is getting infections. You have to treat a lot of kids with infections. Infections are all over the world. In fact, about one third of the world right now, one third, one out of every three people in the world has a disease called tuberculosis. It attacks the lungs, it makes you cough, and it really causes you to lose weight, and ultimately you can die. I know you in Dallas, you know about infectious diseases. Hope you were all using mosquito repellent this summer because the West Nile virus is a virus that gets transmitted by mosquitoes and it's around us. And my favorite, uh, my favorite infection is the flu. Any of you guys have the flu before? You have it a lot, right? So when you're young and you're real healthy, the flu makes you real sick with fever, but it, 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 it sometimes, uh, sometimes isn't so bad. You get over it pretty well. When you get a little bit older, it can be life-threatening. It's caused by a virus. That's a picture of the virus up there, the flu virus. Now, sometimes it could be really bad. In 1918, we had what's called a flu pandemic here, and one out of every three people in the world caught the flu. Schools were shut down, cities were shut down, uh, parades, they didn't exist, and about 50 million people around the world died of influenza. Pretty bad thing. In 2009, you might have heard of the swine flu, and that came around, but fortunately it wasn't so bad, but still 61 million people in the US got the flu. And the reason why a lot of them got the flu is, you know how we make, everybody get a shot for the flu every year? How do we make that? Well, what we do is we take a little bit of a sample, and this is really the same way they did it in 1930s, is uh, you inject a little bit of that sample in eggs, in eggs that have a little bit of chicken embryos in it, and the virus multiplies. The virus grows within the chicken, the little baby embryonic chicken, uh, and it multiplies many millions of times, and then after a few days, uh, you crack open the egg and you, you purify the virus and you turn it into a shot. That's 1930s and that's the way we did it. The problem is these days you can't really make enough of it. So when the flu comes around and it comes around in a way that we don't expect, like in 2009, what happened is everybody basically got sick before anybody could get the vaccine. So what we got to do, I love chickens, but we got to get out of the chicken business. So one thing that we're doing and we're learning from biology is instead of just using eggs, we take, these are actually cells that grow in a big vat, and we grow them in plastic bags, but they're about the size of a swimming pool, actually. And these cells are cells from ducks that just grow infinitely in culture. They just keep growing and growing and growing. And what we can do with those is we can actually grow the virus in them, which is kind of, it's kind of fun. But my favorite thing, and the last thing I'll say for is what can biology do for you, is in the future, you're going to be getting vaccines from, from these things, from plants. Basically, all a vaccine is is a part of an organism like a virus, a, usually a protein from a virus, that is given back to you. And plants make protein like nothing else. In fact, what you're seeing here behind me is a facility that we have with red and blue lights, because you all learned in your classes that uh, plants go very good with red and blue lights. 
that are growing millions of these plants. And these are actually a relative of the tobacco plant. And what we've trained them to do is actually grow vaccines within their leaves. We infect them with a plant virus. That virus is actually a little bit different, and it causes this plant to make influenza proteins in it. So in the future, in a not too distant future, a room this size will be able to supply a billion vaccines for the world at about a penny per cost. So the next time you want to climb up the wall like a gecko, or the next time you want to make a big dog, or the next time you want to do something that everybody says you can't do, or grow vaccines in plants, and eventually we'll be eating those vaccines instead of getting a shot, I want to remind you what to tell people, and I want these to bring this with you. The New York Times on October 9, 1903 said we would never fly. It would take millions and millions and millions of years, and it would never be done. On the same day, the Wright brothers say, we started assembly today. But what I want to tell you is when they tell you you can't be done, you start assembly today. Thank you very much.